All right, so we got two big matches that are like multi mans. Let's get into these real quick. So the first one is multi means. Yeah. Uh -huh. Anyways, we got the Blackpool Combat Club, which is a course, favorite. Goodbye. Moxley. Yep, Moxley, Wheeler Yuta, and Claudio Casanoli teaming up with Konosuke Takashita and Shota Umino going up against the Elite. Which in this case will be Hangman Adam Page, Matt Jackson, Nick Jackson, Eddie Kingston, and Tomohiro Ishii. And it's going to be a 10 man tag team match. And that's some crazy shit right there. Um, I don't know. I just don't like the Bucks. I like Kenny. And oh, he's not even going to be in this one, is he? Damn. Okay, never mind. Let me see. Because I like the Hangman there. What well, they're calling themselves? Remember, they're they're not calling they're they're calling the triad of the Young Bucks and Hangman. They're calling them the Hung Bucks. I'm not even joking. That's oh, good themselves. Lord, have mercy. That's what they said. They said in AEW, it's like, and here come the Hung Bucks. Oh wait a minute, I did hear that, and I was like, yeah, we like, oh, were talking about that. I was like, no, they did not just say that. And I'm like, oh. I'm like, now I'm not thinking of, oh, that's an intimidating thing. Now I'm thinking of an extremely well endowed deer, and I don't want to think about that. <laughs> hey, Mark, I, I don't want to think of any. I, I don't want to think of any of that at all, including them. So yes, no, thank you. From the same on? writers that brought you Scissor Me Daddy, the Hong Box. <laughs> oh, hold, hold on, hold on, guys. I hate all of you. Hold on, I hate all of you for getting me the AEW. Um, did, you, did you comment on the Orange Cassidy fight um, with you, White? Yeah, I already commented on it. Yeah. Okay, my because I, I thought you didn't. Yeah. So anyway, I don't know why, but I think William, you have to go first or something. We always keep like forgetting if you said something or not. Like I don't know. Um, As a woman who has a memory, I remember who goes. Okay. So anyways, um, but hey, it was nice of Johnny to come up to bat for you. Like, yo, let's see what William says. You know what I mean? So that's also cool. So anyways, um. I'm going to go for the Blackpool Combat Club because just hearing about Hung Bucks, that already kind of like that. And, of course, uh, we got Takashita there, and we got uh, Umino. So, I mean, it'll, it'll be a blast. It'll be a fun matchup overall. I'm going to go for the Blackpool Combat Club. And I'm not sure why there's like a like an echo thing now. I don't know. Um... This is actually kind of a rough one, only because of the fact of, you know, you've got on one side, you've got, you've got Ishii, and then on the other side, you've got Takashito. Uh, Takashita, I, <laughs> this is a really hard call on this one. I do know that more than likely Ishii and Moxley are probably going to be be beating the hell out of each other for the majority of the match. Um, Eddie Burger Kingston can do all fuck all. We really don't care. Oh, well, we going to the top do. till we does. But I don't know. I think just for the sake of argument and the fact that I'm just tired of seeing the dumb fucks still. Like they were like, "Hey, we're back," and I'm like, "Hey, I don't care." Um, I'm I'm gonna go with the Black Cool Combat Club. I, I, I just I can't fucking stand those guys. Hey. I'm gonna choose. I'm gonna choose the well endowed deer, the pit bull, and the fat and fatty Arbuckle to win this one. So that's that's my picks. <laughs> I'm sorry. I had to make Will laugh. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, but uh, honestly, no. I think I think more than likely the 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 Bucks and them are going to win because it makes more sense. Uh, because I, I don't really know what the hell they're doing with the Blackpool Combat Club, and it's like it feels like they're going to stretch out this match more and more. Like it, they just keep doing it and over and over again, and it see, feels as though that's that's all they're doing. It's just stretching and stretching and stretching to all out. 
Oh, so it feels like that's all they're doing. They're the hung bucks, right? Because they they keep stretching it. Yeah, because it's Hangman and the young bucks, and they're stretching. And then I start thinking, I'm like, what would they call themselves if they were each individually like, like what if, what if Kenny was a part of them? So would they be the, would they be the hung? hung oh, oh, they'd be the no, they'd be the hung winged angels. Stupidest name I could think of. <laughs> and Sorry. Tony's like, book it. They come out to the arena with like one winged angel being played in banjos. <laughs> Are you ready to go? <laughs> you know what? Honestly, I would love that shit to be 100% honest with you. I would that would actually be kind of funny. But I, I, I think, honestly, like, it's so funny because I'm like, man. It's so sad because having a, per- a person like the young, I used to love legitimately beforehand. I really did see like hangman and main event potential. I really saw it. And I honestly thought when they came to AEW, that's where they were going with him. They were trying to put him in the main event, main event, main event. And then <laughs> I think that's where to be a hundred percent honest with you. I think that's where the animosity with punk came from. Because Punk essentially, or MJF or whoever, passed the torch to have Hangman as champion, and he was so boring. And they were just like, wow, we put our eggs in no basket. And Punk was like, you want me to have it? They're like, yes, please save us. And they did it. And that's when everyone turned on. I was like, you didn't even give Hangman a chance. It was like, dude, you had like every opportunity to elevate him. You're the idiots who decided to book him as a seven month stint of him being a drunk. Does everyone else remember that? Did everyone else forget about that? Remember he was like a part of the dark order and he was an alcoholic. Yeah. He'd come to the that. ring stumbling drunk. And I'm like, you chose to write that shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it, it, it's certain things. It's like in wrestling, when you book terrible decisions that you always think, Oh, this will be a good gag. But then you don't have to think about how that's going to affect the wrestler later on. Like, do you know how hard it was for Dustin Rhodes to get out of the visual image of Goldust when he was wearing drag and ball gags and weird shit? Like, how many years he had to bust his ass to get out of that mold? I mean, like, you put someone in that mold, they, they, they don't, it takes forever to get out of it. And the sad thing is you kind of screwed Hangman and instead you want to blame Punk. It's like, dude, no, you screwed him, not him. <laughs> but honestly, again, I think because uh, I think th- doesn't the combat come the country club, the the whatever the fuck they're called, the 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 pizza cutter supreme, the Papa John's pizza cutter, whatever the fuck their club is called, aren't they also gonna like Aren't aren't they don't they already have a win over the elite? Like I thought they did, didn't they? Uh, I I forgot the last. Because I remember they had that. Didn't they have that anarchy in the arena match? And didn't they win that? Or did, oh yeah, uh, yeah, they won it because because of the sudden betrayal of of Don Callis and Takashita. Yeah, yeah. Did I so fall asleep on that match? Yeah, you were you were dead. <laughs> yeah, that was you I and everyone else in the fucking super arena. kick. No, seriously, that was the, did I catch you fall asleep on that? that match? That was oh. the match where the most memorable thing was them shutting off the music. That was the most memorable thing about that match. <laughs> oh, but they super kicked that dude yeah. or something. Yeah, see? I don't remember a damn thing about that match other than the fact that the mat- the song went on so goddamn long that they literally yeah, had to they did the, the stupid band. wild thing over and over and over again. They did it for like a good <laughs> seven <laughs> minutes. I was like, fuck this shit. Anyway, but they already have a win on them, so it would make sense for the Bucks and the whatever the fuck, them to have a win over them, and then later, them colliding at All Out. That's what I think is going to happen more than likely. Okay, okay. He's going to stretch out that storyline, because you know Callus is trying to get against Kenny. Okay. Wait, who's going up against each other again? I kind of forget. I know I don't care, but um, <laughs> all I know is this. The home just, they're rubbed the wrong way. 
And um, and you know how I feel about the Blackpool Combat Club. I know you want to interpret it the way you want to interpret it. So, you know, go on and go and like, I know, I know. I'm waiting for it. I'm waiting for it, you know? I said it on purpose. I don't care. Uh huh. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. <laughs> Okay, Droopy. So, so who you uh, decide to uh, win? Which one of these two teams of of of, of men will rise to the occasion? <laughs> I don't think there's enough medicine in the world for that. Um. Anyway, let's see. Um. Maybe. No. In all honesty, though, you know, in all seriousness, I am having trouble with this one because, like I said, like. Personally, I would go with the Blackpool Combat Club, but at the same time, I could also see the Elite winning because, like you meant, like it was mentioned, you know that they, you know, they seem to have like a one-to-one -one type thing, and maybe they can like go again, at, you know, at another pay-per-view and do something there. But you know, I just want to go with the Blackpool Combat Club. It just seems like they keep making them win shit, and I just I don't know. And Moxley is going to be there. He's probably going to bleed all over the place so he can win. And I don't know. What do you think, Johnny, of this monstrosity? Wait, wait, wait. Who did you, who did you, uh... Hmm? Jupe, so who did you pick? Mm -hmm. so write this down. Oh, by the Blackpool Combat Club. I mean, they're probably going to win. I mean, I don't know, because I don't care one way or the other, because I just don't care about this match at all. But um, I think they're going to win. And like I said, come on now, Eddie Kingston. I can't help with this. I can't take him seriously. I just laugh at him. I mean, he waddles like a penguin. I mean, I can't take something that waddles like a penguin seriously. That's not an actual penguin. I mean, I think penguins are cute, but it's Eddie Kingston. He's been giving penguins a bad name. This is how I feel about it. But anyway, I don't think they're going to win. Not with Eddie Kingston on the team, anyway. So I think the Blackpool Combat Club is going to win. Uh, and then all havoc will break loose and whatever. I'm probably not going to remember anything about this match unless there's someone sings for a long time and the Young Bucks kick them out again. Okay, so Johnny, what do you think? Okay, this is, this is quite a... Um... This is quite a weird match, um, to be honest. Um, but, you know, I'm going to put my own biases just for the fact that I don't like the Young Bucks at all. Like, I don't care. I'm also not invested in this match. I'm not, like, crazy about this match. But I would still prefer the Blackpool Combat Club to win just for the fact that... Uh, Hey, at least it's not the Young Bucks winning, right? <laughs> but the same token, I mean, John Moxley's gonna drag this match super bloody. You know, it has to be a tradition. You know, it has to be a tradition that every pay per view there's a long ass, bloody ass, forgettable match. So you know, they have to put Moxley there, keep the tradition going. You know, but uh, yeah, and honestly, I think. I don't know, maybe they'll win this match because, you know, John Moxie will, you know, make the rest of this lose a lot of blood. <laughs> mm. Like, you know, like Claudio Casanone. Um, Adam Page is a good wrestler, but damn, him being teamed up with the young ones, it kind of ruins a little bit, you know? So, definitely he's going to be the Blackpool comeback. Even though, you know, bloody John Boxley, John Boxley, will be in the match. Wait, I have a question. In the anarchy, it was the anarchy in the arena. Yeah. The other yeah. thing I remember, is that the one with the exploded shoe? Yeah. Okay, yeah. there were two things I remember. The exploding super kick, yeah. The exploded super kick. They never... That they never established or talked about where the fuck that came from at all. That was his, that was his ultra. That was his critical art, you know. Oh my gosh! So yeah, that's what it was. So it was the that that super the exploding super kick, and the um, the the I'm kicking of the, the 
the yeah, the kicking of the the, the person singing the song, and probably my eyelids. No, no. <laughs> Yeah. So anyways, uh, that's most people there. So next match we got is kind of hard to see, kind of hard to determine because uh, one of the per people will not be um, announced until a collision tomorrow. And by the time you guys are watching this, you know, you might already know, but you know, you know how I got recordings in advance and, and uh, edit them and all that. But basically is Le Suzuki Gods. Oh, geez, Jericho. Jericho, Sammy Guevara, and Minoru Suzuki versus Sting. It's Sting! It's Darby Sting. Allen and to be announced. So if you don't know who it is, I don't know if Jack or William might have some educated guesses there. But um, first time ever. Everyone. This surprised me a lot because, you know, the whole WCW stuff. I am surprised that Jericho never faced Sting ever. Not, I mean, not even during Surfer Sting or whatever. That, that kind of Surprised me. So the first time in the ring, Jericho versus Sting with the others. But um, but yeah, it's hard for me to see. I'm gonna blindly go with Sting and Darby because I have a feeling that whoever they chose is gonna be one hell of a you know difference maker. So I'll just go with Sting's team, even though it's kind of going blind. But even the Jack, if he has any like educated guesses on who it might possibly be, I I have two, but uh, I want to hear who. Uh... Will thinks it might be, might be first before I go. Uh, to be brute honest with you, uh, there was one guy that I know that Jericho had like a mad, just ridiculous uh, beef with in Japan. Um, I forget the guy's name. It's right on the tip of my tongue. But I got a feeling that it's going to be him. Wait, I have a question. So you mean like you said a, a, a actual beef from him? So you mean like a kayfabe beef? Yeah, it was a kayfabe beef. Okay, yeah. I'm about to say it because I was like, like you a know, few, saying, like a not few like a, with him. Not like, like a, a, a what is although to be fair, worker, although to be fair, Jericho head. has burned a lot of bridges too. So yeah, especially that's what I was Japan. curious when you said a, a, um, a beef with someone, I was thinking along the lines of that. So my thing of it is, is I have to think about it's going to be one of. The thing of it is, it has to be someone who has both, has a beef with both Suzuki and Jericho. Uh, if it's just Suzuki, uh, the safe bet would be Yoda Suji. But I, uh, not Yoda Suji, would be, um, oh God, what's his name? Uh, Blue Justice, um, Yuji Nagata. But I don't think they're going to use him because it would be kind of a waste uh, the reason I chose him, he's he's he is an established strong style wrestler, and he's also an old school veteran. So it would make sense that Sting knows him, but which would Wait blow ev everyone's fucking mind, which makes perfect sense if you think about it. If you follow the New Japan logic, there's one the person who had a feud with who had a feud with Suzuki and. He also got screwed out by Jericho when he was in New Japan, and he is a top guy in New Japan, and it is Tetsuya, Tetsuya Naito. Naito. Tetsuya Naito is the king is like the king of Tranquilo. Um <laughs> he is a Japanese wrestler who mastered the concept of fucking with his opponent around. He gets in your head. One of the best things he does is his his finisher is called the Destino. He does a move where it's literally he runs up to you, grabs you by the head, swings around, flips over you, and does a reverse DDT. Like, it's all in one quick motion. So it's like... Um, he's also known for fucking, and, uh, fucking over his opponent by getting in their head by what he does is he'll literally... He'll make you think he's going to, like, attack you, and then he doesn't. Or, like, he'll... Good example. Before a match, everyone else gets to the ring. You know, they're all doing their poses. They take off their gear and all this stuff. Naito, doesn't matter what it is, strolls. He's slow. He takes his time. And he literally goes... <laughs> <laughs> He's just like... Mm. And then he'll do a couple stretches. And then he'll do like that. Or like one of his favorite things he used to do is he used to go like 
him and Okada created this thing where they would fuck with their opponent. And Okada will do it against Danielson, I guarantee it. Where Okada, Naito used to do this thing where he would um, he'd run to the ropes, run back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And he, like, you're outside of the ring. He runs between the ropes, back and forth, like he's going to dive. And then he rebounds off the ropes, lands in the middle of the ring, and goes like that. <laughs> Just to fuck with you. He does that. Oh, he does that Andrade thing, you know that 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 tranquilo pose. Yeah. He always says that. He, he speaks Spanish too, so he's like Buenos noches. He, he's Spanish, but he knows Spanish. Or he's he's Japanese, but he knows Spanish too. Uh, him Andrade and Roosh used to be a part of the same faction together, uh, called Ingobre, Lo, Los Ingobernables de Japón. He created Los Ingobernables de Japón. Hmm. He's the leader of Los Ingobernables de Japón. But he is also, like I said, one of the top guys in New Japan. And it would make perfect sense because he did have a feud with Jericho. And they did fight because Jericho screwed him out of the Intercontinental Championship years back. And they kind of had this big feud going back and forth. And so it would make sense. And he always gets on Suzuki's nerves because Suzuki hates the fact that he's gotten the title he's won the title before and he doesn't take anything seriously because naito doesn't give a fuck naito literally when he won the title he was literally a top heel and he was literally taking the title and dragging it on the ground just like dragging the metal on the ground and like <laughs> like he didn't give a fuck he, he literally did that for a reason though he said because the belt was so old like oh. it was so worn out it's like you want me to carry this leathery piece of crap and then he literally goes they go, well, no, it's the top title. You need to show prestige to it. He's like, fuck that. And he takes the belt and he broke it amongst the ring. <laughs> amongst the ring. And then they forcibly created a new belt, which became his belt. And it, like I said, but that's how, when he was a heel, and then he became a, he, here's how popular Naito is. In Japan, Los Ingobernables de Japón is more popular than Bullet Club. Hmm. And Bullet Club is, internationally known but like if you say a person in new japan crowd wear the bullet club shirt it's like cool they love american bullet club and japanese bullet club but if you see someone with a los ingobernable shirt they're like true fan <laughs> yeah he used to he always does that because he's like looking into the future and he fucks yeah, I see the but one of the things, he's also in, in uh, fire like, pro wrestling yep yeah. he does this he does uh okada created this thing to where they, they created these taunts against each other, where one of them, where Okada would get your opponent, like, leaning on the ropes, like, you're going to do a chop. And Okada would get... <laughs> Okada started it when he fight, fought Naito. He'd get him in the ropes. And then you go... You're leaning on the ropes. Okada go... <laughs> <laughs> you'll see him do it against Danielson. And it just pisses off your opponent, and then he'll get you to swing, and then he'll duck and beat the shit out of you. <laughs> Naito does it all the time where he goes like, he goes. <laughs> <laughs> like he does it to fuck with you. He's like if Cassidy could wrestle. Oh, no. I'm Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But Naito is a legit top guy. And if they get him, they're going to win. So I'm going to pick Sting and Darby and Naito personally if they pick naito if they don't pick naito it's a wasted opportunity to have naito because he's never wrestled at forbidden door either now um william did you go up to, i know you you like they asked you like who you thought your guest was but did you choose who's gonna win um yeah i went with sting and darby because that was exactly the guy who i was referring to uh when i said that you know basically him and jericho had beef Mm. Long story short, if Zero Fucks Given was an actual human being, it'd be Naito. <laughs> like, legitly, that's who he is. Oh. So, yeah. Cass him, Cassidy tries to come off like he's cool and doesn't care. Naito actually, actually doesn't care. Actually does Yeah. <laughs> uh, funny story about this shirt real quick, though. Um, back in my day when I was, like, binge shopping nonstop pro wrestling t-shirts, it was out of control, man. Um, I ordered, I forgot what I, I ordered some shirts. I forgot what, what I ordered, you know? But when I got, like, the package, 
I'm like, I got this shirt and I got a Cody shirt and I'm all, I didn't order these, you know, what the hell? And it was like some random dudes, like, like the package was my address, but the actual order form was like this other dude and whatever. So I let them know what's going on and they were like, oh shit, you know? So they sent me my shirts. I asked them, what do I do with these? I didn't even put them on. I didn't even open, they were still, you know, wrapped and folded, right? They're like, eh, keep them. We'll send, we'll send the dude next to, you know, pair. So that was pretty awesome. Just got two shirts for free. Yep, the Bullet Club Kanji shirt is fucking cool. Yeah. Ash, is kat- Ash is Katakana, and it says Bareto Club. How dare you correct me? <laughs> <laughs> it says Bullet Club. Well, yeah, because they don't have an L in their language. No, is that Boo? It's Ba. Ballet Club. The Ballet Club. Ballet Club. That's what it says. Because I was going to ask, is that supposed to say Bullet Club? Because that's not Bullet. <laughs> Man, it's an easy mistake, though. It's still in the same category, the same line. It's just Bond and Boo, so, yeah. And, and, and the reason I know that Boo's in my name. Okay, so... Okay, so William has gone, and Jack has given his reasons. And this is what, who I think is going to win this. I am going with Sting and Darby Allen. Well, uh, first of all, I want to say if this Naito, if Naito is the one that they choose, and Naito is the way that the way Orange Cassidy is supposed to be, I'm looking forward to seeing that. But aside from that, I was going to go with Sting and Darby Allen because Chris Jericho been losing all the time anyway. So what's another loss for him? What's another loss for him? And uh, the epitome of sports entertainers, you know, mm-hmm. all those those sports entertainers keep losing. So what's another loss? Just saying. All right, Johnny. <laughs> Short two. Yeah, but 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 I mean, may, maybe Sting and Darby will win. But do they know who what makes Daddy Nipples hard? Daddy cool. Daddy hard. Oh God. Yeah, for this match, uh, definitely, I think it's going to be um, Sting. Um, also, because, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but um, Sting has not having been on TV for a while, hasn't he? <laughs> so this is a so big comeback. And in the big cake per view, what's a better time to, than to, you know, put Sting back to the spotlight and that he actually wins this match? And not only that, but then you also have Darby Adam doing his crazy shit as well. So that that would be awesome. I really don't know who's going to be. I mean, you guys, you know, already predicted who who could be. But seriously, it could just be anybody that makes it even. I I think that makes the match even more intense because it's like it's almost like a guarantee that uh, hopefully, hopefully, if the they do this correctly, you know, Sting actually wins this match. But, because, uh, yeah, I don't know, man. I don't see how, because um, like you said, uh, Chris Jericho keeps losing all the time. And I, and Sammy Guevara, he just gets so distracted, like, all the time. Like, he's just not, he hasn't really been the same since, yeah, since a long time ago. So, yeah, I think it's definitely going to be Sting. Mm. Also, right, no, the reason uh, Sting and uh, and Jericho never fought each other is because they were in totally different sections of the card. Uh, Jericho was always a lower mid carder, and Sting was always a top guy. So mm-hmm. it, it would be like the equivalent of having freaking Roman Reigns fight, I don't know, whatever jabroni comes from NXT. Oh, boy. So next we have um, another big one here. We got Kenny Omega. Versus Will Ospreay singles match for the IWGP United States Heavyweight Championship. So this is a tough one, man. Um, damn. I don't know, man. Because on one side, Kenny's been having a little bit of losses here and there, thanks to Callis. So I don't know. I want to say I want to say Will Ospreay. I just don't know if Will Ospreay will win 100% clean or it'll come like real, real close. But whoa, here comes Dumb Callis, you know, and 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 it costs Kenny the match. So I don't know. 
Bobby the Edge Will Ospreay. And this will be the match that we ne we never got last year because they put him up against fucking Cassidy. So now we'll see more of a real match and everything. I don't know. On this one, uh, it, it's... This one's actually a tough match. Like, if there's no shenanigans at play and they fought straight up, this would actually be a tough match. It's going to be a good match, I can tell you that. But I don't know. I'd They've been doing the back and forth for so long, and Ken, Kenny's usually about the long haul of storytelling. So I think they're going to kind of tennis match this one. I think Osprey's going to win this one and get the title, and then there's going to be a Forbidden Door 3, and that's when Kenny wins it again. So yeah, I'm going to give it the Will Osprey on this one. Well, um, the uh, it's the Wrestle Kingdom rematch, the match that was like probably match of the night last year between Kenny Omega and Will Ospreay, because it came down to a point of everyone asking, not if Kenny could wrestle. It it, it literally came down to the question of. Could Kenny now keep up with Osprey now? And not only did he do it, he beat him. But not after a 46 or 48 minute match that was literally a war between them that literally got bloody. They beat the shit out of each other. And Kenny barely, barely beat Osprey. I mean, literally, Kenny left with a giant black eye. And Osprey was covered in blood. It was literally a war. And oh. it was, if you haven't seen that match, you need to go watch it. It's f phenomenal. Not to mention, that match has still has one of the best wrestling intros in fucking history when, uh, when Kenny Omega came out. Yeah, that was fucking awesome. Yeah, because his entrance wasn't his song. It was literally the Final Fantasy VII Sephiroth theme. Yeah. Uh Oh, really? Man. Yeah, he came. Yeah, well, remember and... his move is called the One Winged Angel. It's named after Sephiroth. Yeah, yeah. He came decked out in full Sephiroth yeah. gear, and then when he raised his arm up, a black wing pops out on the screen. Yeah, he literally went wing. like that, and he went like that behind him, and then literally the tight the 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 screen behind him had a wing right by, like show up like a behind him. It was really fucking badass. But at the same time, I'm I'm going to say, I, I, oh my God, that match was amazing. If it's even a fragment as good as it was, uh, as it was before the last match, then this match is going to be fantastic and epic. And I honestly think it's more than likely going to be Osprey. It makes sense for Osprey to win it. He needs to win it. He even said that. He literally said, I went to hell. I went through hell, and I will get my belt back. And if he does, he literally said, I'm going not just to get my belt back, but I'm going to get my, I'm going to get my belt, and I'm going to defeat Kenny Omega in Canada. It's Canada versus Osprey. So he's literally doing it in Canada, taking his belt. And I do believe that probably Callus will have some sort of interference. But what I would love, what I would love is Callus trying to interfere and then Great Ocon showing up <laughs> and him just going, and then like grabbing him and just like, and like, and then Osprey beating Kenny clean. That's what I would, my dream would be. Uh, but again, it's also a matter of, it seems like they keep constantly playing hot potato with the U S championship and giving it to AEW talent who never do shit with it. And it's, it's why even do it, you know, at least when AEW, at least when new Japan has some form 
a relationship with another company, they promote the shit out of that company, you know? Yeah. Uh, I, I just, I don't understand why New Japan, why AEW is incapable of like promoting another company to help boost their ratings. Because like, that's what they did with this pay-per-view too. I mean, if you notice, like they, it took them how many, they literally didn't start announcing matches until two weeks ago. And I'm like, dude, you had two months because you knew the New Japan faithful were going to bail your ass out. You knew it. <laughs> <laughs> you could slap the New Japan logo on a goddamn Arby's and we'd still go to it. <laughs> <laughs> because that's how loyal we are. <laughs> but it's the point of it is, it's like, dude, you guys could have built up matches for like months and established storylines, but then you're like, nah. But you know what's really important? We need to find out what color shade MJF's new scarf is going to be. I'm like, who gives a shit? They probably didn't know who was going to get injured yet, so they probably took precautions need, on that, too. We need to get 16 different angles. This is, I will say this flat out now, this is going to be the best AEW pay-per-view. Why? Because the acclaimed aren't here. Whoa. Thank God. Somebody broke the scissors. Thank you. Because I, I literally was thinking the only belt not defended is the IWGP World Tag Team Champions. And right now, Bishoman, which is Yoshihashi and Hiroki Goto, they are not only the IWGP, but they're also the New Japan Strong Championships. They're both they're both tag team champions because they won it after um, United Empire had to... to uh, after Aussie Open had to relinquish them for their injury. But I literally could just imagine Goto as honorable and respectful and Yoshihashi when they go, oh, you'd have to defend it against the acclaim. They go, no. <laughs> I can see him like, no. As much as I like the acclaimed as a kind of a, you know, just, just for the fun of it and the joking part of it, it only in that regard... If it's coming to something legit serious, I could I would see I couldn't see it working, honestly. And I would have seen seemed to me that the Japanese wrestlers, with the exception of probably like maybe a very few exceptions, they seem to Yano. Maybe I could see I could see like Toriano or something funny, like Toriano and like maybe you know you know what I mean, Will. Like maybe Toriano could do something with like Orange Cassidy or something. Yeah, I could see that. Like Toriano versus Dianhausen would be hilarious. <laughs> I would pay money to see Toriano. Toriano is a comedy wrestler who literally like duct tapes people and he literally goes like he'll cheat and then he'll get caught. He's like, Sumi Basen! Sumi Basen! And then like one of the other running gags is Toriano will do something funny and he'll cheat, but because he's a good guy, they don't want to acknowledge it. So Kevin Kelly, every time he cheats, Kevin Kelly goes, my monitor's out. My monitor's what out. Yeah. <laughs> so like Yano will low blow, roll up and get a pin. It's like, my monitor went out. What happened? What? No, Yano wouldn't cheat. What happened? What? I get so funny. <laughs> <laughs> so anytime someone cheats, me and my me and my roommate slam, we always go, my monitor went out. What happened? <laughs> <laughs> Oh man. Anyways, uh, your thoughts, Jupes? I don't know anymore. <laughs> uh, oh my god, the guy who was in the match. I forgot who won the match up again. I forgot. I got so <laughs> Good job, Jack. You broke everybody this time. I broke the internet. No. no. Is this uh, Kenny Omega versus okay, Austin? Okay, we're all three. Okay, oh, okay, yeah, so... thank you. I kind of forgot. I mean, seriously, I legit forgot. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Um, I was going to go with, I really have no idea who to choose for this one. And I'm just going to do just a, um, this is based on nothing. I'm just going with O3 on this one as opposed to Kenny. So there you go. And actually, I'm punishing Kenny Omega. Okay, this is my illogical reasoning. I am going against Kenny Omega here because he has associated himself okay. with the Young Bucks. That is my reason. All right, Johnny, take it away. And I do have a question for Will and Jack after, in, after Johnny. 
you know, that's a good, that's a good um, reasoning there, just for the fact that Kenny Omega's with the Young Bucks and just like whatever. So, yeah, we'll give it to uh, Will Osprey. You're all good. Uh, we all good. got uh, the one that I think Jack or William or both of you mentioned people that people in Japan were laughing about, but it's Sonata versus Jungle Boy Jack Perry with Hook in the background loitering. Singles match for the IWGP World Championship title. And Good back. I'm going to give it to Sonata. I don't see, I mean, yeah, again, once again, hell of a match. It'll be badass. Blah, bloody, bloody, fuckity, bloody, but Sonata. This is the one match that, again, AEW's writers must have been on this one because why? Fucking why? Why is this even a thing? Like, why is this even going on? Like, Jungle Boy versus Sun. Are you fucking kidding me? The New Japan faithful are laughing their ass off. There you go, Lij represent. Anyway, <laughs> sorry, I got distracted. Uh, my whole thing is, my whole thing of it is. The New Japan faithful are laughing their asses off because they go, of all the people to be your top guy or a top guy, a top contender for our belt, you chose Jungle Boy? I mean, like, again, Jungle Boy is very talented. I'm not disrespecting the dude as his talent. I'm saying as far as his status within the company. He doesn't have enough of a win-loss record. He doesn't have enough of an establishment within the company to be justified enough to get a top title, period. I mean, realistically, it doesn't make any sense because I'm like, dude, I mean, fucking, fucking Tanahashi is the ace of New Japan, and he is an established company. He's fighting their top guy. And they chose, uh, dad, jungle boy. You might as well just have Matthew Matt Maynard Matt Menard versus him. It's like fuck at that point. Like you don't even give a shit at that point. He's like, you know what, Sonata? You know what makes my daddy magic nipples at? It's like no. <laughs> they're like, <laughs> because honestly, that that's the thing is Sonata has reestablished himself as this new serious confirmative wrestler who's gotten better and better. Now that he's the top guy, he's proven why he's the top guy. And well, let's be honest, like fuck, so fucking not even that few, not even a few months ago, Jungle Boy could barely beat Christian. <laughs> That's the guy you choose? Wouldn't it make more sense? This is what it, what, what should have happened. Here's what should have happened. Jungle Boy goes out, it's like, you know what, Sonata, I'm gonna call you out. And da 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 da, you open an open challenge for IWGP, and then as soon as he does that, Hook goes. And he goes. I'm challenging for that. Hook versus Sonata. That would be a fucking cool match. Yeah, I would pay to see that because that would prove and elevate Son Hook. Because, like I said, as I've said the last three podcast, two podcasts, he's undefeated still. <laughs> he's still undefeated. Yeah. And he's never gotten a title shot. What the hell? And he's actually got more of a technique around his style that he could actually elevate to a championship level. I don't think he would win, but he has more of a contendership, in my opinion, than Jungle Boy does. Like, the only thing, maybe it, only, the only chance that I could see them using Jungle Boy in this situation and him being taken seriously is... If he does a complete gimmick shift, like the Jungle Boy whole ordeal is gone, he comes back like damn near basically a heel. That's the only way I could even see this even working on to people even taking this seriously. Otherwise, him representing the company would be about the equivalent of them making a WWE 2K24 and putting Baron Corbin on the fucking cover. No, I was gonna say. Remember, he, I was say Heath Slater, but okay. Here, here's because you gotta <laughs> look back. Look back, literally last year. Who was the IWGP The IWGP, the first time ever defended in AEW. Jay White was the champion. He went in 
the first time ever that championship was defended, that new championship, the IWGP World Heavyweight Championship, that he had beaten Okada to get was defended for the first time ever in a fatal four-way in in the history of that belt, in the history of that belt having existed since 1972. It's never been defeated, de- defended in a fatal four-way. And they go, let's defend it overseas in the fatal four-way. First time ever. And not only that, we're going to have him defend it against Okada and Hangman and Adam Cole. Boom. Fucking awesome match. Cut to now. Uh, Jungle Book. It would be the equivalent of like in in imagine if stardom in stardom Tam Nakano, who's the current top champion, she has both belts. She says, "I'm going to defend for the first time in the United States. Defend an open challenge. Anyone from AEW wants to challenge for these belts, come at me." And the person they choose is Anna J. <laughs> You'd be like, "This is fucking insulting." <laughs> what the hell is this shit? It's nothing against Anna J, but it's also like, dude, no, <laughs> you're missing an opportunity to make some money, bro. <laughs> dude, that hurt my soul hypothetically. Like, that's just bad. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and now to challenge for the women's champion, the WWE women's champion to represent AEW. <gasps> Sandy Vicky Guerrero. Ah! <laughs> Vicky Guerrero. What the <laughs> now Santina just showed up. Tony Stan and everybody. He was uh, uh one of his um you know he was a little you know he wasn't thinking straight that day. Anyway, he he yeah. on Santina. Obviously, obviously Sonata's gonna win. And is Jungle Boy gonna put up a fight? Absolutely. No fucking way they're gonna have him win. He's there's no fucking way in hell that he's gonna win. No nope. fucking way. Mm-mm. If he wins, the the world will fucking reverse itself and go straight to hell. <laughs> wow! All right, and I think William, I know you already gave your your opinion on this way. I mean, you, everyone here has to say Sonata, right? Yeah, we all are in agreement with this one, right? Yeah. Okay, because also something you said earlier that I was going to mention. But um, you just said it early. You just said it first. The thing about how this for Jungle Boy, this is probably one of the way to turn him heel by doing this match, and we will just see how he turns out when he comes back from it. And it's probably the only reason they put him in that because they were trying to do something with his character. Because right now he's just kind of whatever at this moment. But yeah, so now he's gonna win. I mean, why would he? I mean, why would he? Win? I mean, when they said they were putting him up against. Why? There are other people in this promotion that you can use. Open up the toy box, take out the other action figures that need to be played with, and put them in the match. That's all I'm saying. But you know, I mean, Tony. And the thing is, I'm not just talking regular heel. He'd have to go like super hard heel to the point that when he got back to AEW. Luchasaurus would have to walk up to him and go, yo, chill the fuck out. Like, at this point, like, his old tag team partner would have to be like, uh, bro, you good? Um, yeah, um, I'm, I'm just gonna be over here. Yeah, like, but, he'd have to get scary heel for him but, to even but, remotely touch Sonata. It's okay. Not- All right, but here is the question. Who is in charge of creative of Dynamite and Rick Page? Tony? Okay, God. It's Tony. Unfortunately, yeah. The the non blinking one. Huh? The non blinking one. Yeah, that's the problem. Donnie, what are what are your thoughts? What's what's your Johnny's about to blow us all away with a theory that makes sense as to how uh what's his name? Jungle Boy can possibly win. Yeah, I'm gonna have to go over everybody. I think Sonata's gonna win this match. He's so far more um from what you guys have mentioned, because I've never seen him wrestle before, but he seems like the way more superior wrestler than, you know, no offense to Jungle Boy, he's a good wrestler on his own. 
but I think, you know, Jungle Boy's not yet to that level, so I think it's going to be Sonata. I mean, J Sonata is also the other thing. Is Sonata just became the top champion. He had to, he had to bust his ass to become even a single star. Like he started, he's been in New Japan since 2017. He was a part of the original LIJ, and they basically just shoehorned him into a a new a tag team. He was basically the Marty Janetti of New Japan to Evil, and then he had to break away from that establish himself get better and better he even turned his back on lij he's not even a part of lij anymore he yeah. has a new faction called just five guys which is fucking stupid name but they're all good and they're all pretty established guys and, and so like how, I said, how are is, their uh how are their burgers and fries though <laughs> i you know what's so funny they literally when they were in the states they took a photo in front of a five guys and did the pose and I died laughing. And like, it was, <laughs> it was literally in front of a sign that said five guys because their pose, this is their pose. It's literally going like this, each of them putting a thumb up in a, in a circle. It's a little lame. They still need to figure that whole thing out. But Sonata himself, like I said, he busted his ass, took him years to get where he was. He won the New Japan Cup, which is a thing no one ever thought he would do. Cashed it in against Okada and beat Okada clean like in a really, really hard-hitting match. And he had to actually, I don't know if anyone remembers Velveteen Dream. You remember Velveteen Dream? Yeah. You know that, you know that, you know that underhook uh, DDT that he does? Yeah. He used to do? Sonata does that now. That's his new finisher. His other mm -hmm. finisher is called the Skull End, which is a dragon sleeper. So imagine a reverse DDT, but he's grabbing your neck and he swings you around by Ooh. your neck. Then he wraps his legs around your core, drops you to the ground to make you knock out, and then gets on top of the ring, or gets on top of the rope, does a Muda moonsault, because the great Muda trained him, and basically, yeah, he pins you that way. <laughs> that was his original finish. Fatality. That was called the... Fatality. That was called the skull end. But anyway, but uh, like I said... It's also a skill skill level. Like it, it's Jungle Boy's just not up to the skill of Sonata. It's as simple as that. Is Sonata is he skilled? Yeah. Is he skilled as Sonata? No, <laughs> not even close. Oh man. So, anyways, um, the final match we got here, which might get some groans here and there, it's uh, MJF winning his title, AEW World Championship title against Hiroshi Tanahashi. And unfortunately, I'm going to give it to MJF. I really doubt he's going to drop it to someone that won't be around to defend the title and all that. So that's my general thing. Uh, I'm wondering if they will have eventually CM Punk do a rematch to take the title. Because I'm thinking, like, who else could take the title off MJF? You know what I mean? He's being most of the top guys, unless they send Kenny after him, maybe. But, um... Eh. I don't know. I'd have to agree with you as much as I love, I fucking love Tanahashi. They're not going to let them run away. They're not going to let a New Japan guy run away with that title. So, unfortunately, unfortunately, as much as I would love to see Tanahashi beat the living dog piss out of MJF, I'm going to have to give it to MJF. Now, this would be the one thing. This would be the one thing that would give me respect for him because I know he can do it. MJF actually has some wrestling skill. If he can beat him clean, then I'd have much respect for him. Otherwise, this is just going to be a safety net match for MJF so he doesn't lose his shit. Plain and simple. Go ahead, Johnny. Yeah, I actually think, I mean, it's like, it's like what you said. If, if MJF was, was able to fight this match and win this match fair and square, then, hey, I would actually have much higher respect to MJF. But I think his gimmick is that, hey, he's going to win, but he's going to cheat. 
his way to the top, like what he always does. So um, I think MJF, and not only that, but you know, it's his whole heel gimmick. So I think he's going to win the match like the way he's have always won the match by cheating his way to the top. So I think it's going to be MJF for this one. You go ahead, Wendy. I'll go last. <laughs> As pointed out, I think MGF is going to win for the reasons pretty much that you guys were saying. And I was going to, I was going to say, you know, some of what you guys were saying. It would be interesting. I mean, because he, okay, MJF can still defend the title because he'll be like, you know, over here. And like you always say, it's, you know, it's a little difficult for some of these Japanese wrestlers to even get in there. But, yeah, I couldn't see him dropping the title like that at all. So I really just couldn't see MJF losing. And I still say they can probably keep MJF because they probably have something else in mind for him to go against a certain somebody or just somebody else in general. Who knows? Mm. All right, Jack. So... I was thinking about this uh, since they announced the match and seeing what they're doing with AEW on television. And the timing of everything seems kind of funny how it works out. It would work out. And maybe this is me being a over-critically thinking booker. But let's see if you can follow my logic on this. So... Next month is the G1 Climax. As I've already said, an establishment that is considered the great, it is considered the hardest wrestling tournament of all time. And on top of that, it allows other championships to be promoted. So there could be that possibility for Tanahashi to defend it. However, what also adds to that same concept of that would be not only would be it allow the AEW championship to be seen in Japan for the first time, other than when Jericho had it for a split second. But Tanahashi carrying it would add to the legacy of AEW. Keeping that out of the way, though, in the storyline of AEW right now, they seem to be trying to establish this concept of Jer of you know enemies becoming partners kind of thing with MJF and Cole. Now that they're in that whatever the hell the what the hell is that tournament called where they force them to tag together i forgot but some kind of weird like random tag tournament yeah but they show they they made they made cole and mjf a tag team and yeah. they're already establishing a feud between them so it would actually make more sense in a sense of booking to have mjf drop the belt now follow me on this he drops the belt to tanahashi shocking everybody no one would expect it. Tanahashi then becomes champion, puts his title on him while he's in the G1, which keeps the title safe because he wouldn't have to defend it. Mm -hmm. Then, on top of that, while the G1's going on at the same time, they have this establishment of this other tournament going on with Cole and MJF co going for the sh a shot at the tag team belts, creating a rivalry feud and all this shit happening, all that crap happening down the road. Then... What will happen is cut to about a couple, a month or so after the G1 climax, you have like in a critical match, a critical match during the G1 tournament where, say, like Tanahashi needs points and he needs it to win the tournament or he get, needs it to get to the semifinals of the tournament. And then MJF shows up in Japan. And screws Tanahashi. Jeez. Adds more of an elevation to the shot at the title. Then Tanahashi, ta then it builds up this thing where they go, Adam Cole versus MJF will still be feuding. He goes, no, I want a shot at the shot against Tanahashi. And da 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 Turn it into a triple threat. Tanahashi loses the belt to MJF because MJF, screws Adam Cole, pins Adam Cole, hmm. gets the belt back. That's what I would do. It would establish AEW in Japan. 
it would elevate the title's prestige and it would actually give a better storyline for MJF and Cole to have a better feud. Because let's be honest, all of MJF's feuds thus far since he's been the champion have been wet farts and no one cares. Now, based off of my booking decision, wouldn't that be exciting for you guys as wrestling fans to watch that progress? Yeah. Honestly, for just sure. just the uh, MJF being in Japan alone would already be headlines. It'd be on all the thumbnails and stuff for the wrestling things. and Yeah, and also it'd be all over the Japanese sports sections. Because the thing of it is, is every time they do a major show in New Japan or a major event in New Japan, they always have the Japanese sports photographers on staff by hand, by there. Literally, the idea of MJF coming from the crowd, sneaking in, costing Tanahashi the G1 climax, and the staff, and like him having the belt and like over Tanahashi like that. That photo alone. Dude, I could see that framed like all over like the cover of like Japanese newspapers. And he could literally be like, I made a name. He's like, I proved that I'm the best in the world. I've and he's like, I proved that I'm the best in AEW in Japan in the world. Like, tell me you couldn't see MJF doing that shit. Yeah. Yeah. I can so, see him doing that. But I know, but it's con. It's, it's con. con. Exactly. But with that being said, because I also am Mr. Contrarian, I say, fuck it, and I'm betting on Ace. Why not? Because why not? I don't lose anything, so I'm betting all, but putting all my chips on Ace. Because <laughs> I learned one thing watching the G1 Climax multiple times, never bet against Ace. Because he always surprises you. He always could pull out a good match, and he could, he's going to make MJF earn that victory. If he's going to cheat, if he's going to win, MJF's got to earn that fucking win. All right, so there we go, guys. I think we got our predictions, and uh, it's almost 1 o'clock in the morning after recording right now, so I think it's going to be time for some of us. Some of us actually, well, I'm off tomorrow, but I know some of us still got to work and stuff like that. But, um, but yeah, we'll see what happens, guys. It's going to be better. At least this time, all these people that were injured last time, whatever, are, are now here. So that's already going to be way better. Like, like Jack said, it's going to be banger after banger. But, uh, yeah, one hell of a show. So anyways, guys, Mark Rodriguez here signing off for the uh, America's number one cure for Mzanya, the Diving Cutter Wrestling Podcast. Wayne White, a.k.a. in Japan in 1980. I'm out of here. Jack Knives from Jack Knives Reviews signing out. Wendy, also known as Ninja Juby or Juby Chan. I'll see you guys later, and I'm just going to turn it over to the one that's going to close us out. Send us home, Johnny Rodriguez. Johnny Rodriguez, guys. Um, see you next time. This is going to be an awesome pay-per-view. Um, and yeah, I, the first time they're doing this in Canada, so that's going to be pretty awesome. A. Pretty awesome, A. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty you awesome. You're gonna get some rice balls and cover them in maple syrup. Yeah. <laughs> oh Lordy. Oh, Lordy. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, Pokemon are getting donuts. Remember that. But anyways, guys, <laughs> on that note, see y'all next time. <laughs> hey guys, this is a real short um update slash add-on because um it took so long to edit the first part, and it's like you're gonna reveal the mystery person for that other match and everything. Um, and collision, and it was like a few hours away. So it's like, well, we might as well wait now, find out who the mystery guy is. And I gotta say, I gotta give it to both uh, William White and Jack Knives because you both guessed correctly. It is Naito as the mysterious person joining uh, that one match. And um, I asked you guys, no one is changing their mind. Everyone is uh, staying with that one. So, so there you go. So it's uh, what? It's Sting, Darby, and Naito, right? Versus uh, Jericho, Sammy, and Suzuki. Get the whole the Suzuki sex gods and all that. And that's one thing I don't really think of when you hear of the murder grandpa. But anyways, uh, real quick, lightning round without too much, you know, build up or whatever. We're just going to do this. Uh, they added uh, three more matches for the zero hour on collision. So here we go real quick. We'll give our thoughts. Uh, Johnny and Jack are busy because this is kind of a random, you know, Super short, real quick, short notice, whatever stuff. So 
Um, they left their thoughts though, so I'll read them off and all that. So, uh, the first match they announced here. Let me just get on the wiki because all these members and stuff. Okay, first what we got is United Empire, which consists of Jeff Cobb, Kyle Fletcher, and surprisingly for me, TJP, TJ Perkins. I remember that dude from Two Hundred Five Live and uh, what do you call it, Cruiserweight Classics. I'm surprised to see him here. You know, um, going off after the Ingobernables. Sorry. Los Ingobernables de Japón, Shingo Takagi, Bushi, Hiromu Takahashi. So, um, I don't know. I'm going to give it for LIJ, Los Ingobernables de Japón. And just on that note, real quick, before you guys go in your thoughts, uh, both Johnny and Jack also went for the LIJ. So, what what uh, what say you guys? I'm going to have to gr agree. I'm going to have to stick with my boys, the LIJ. I mean... Let's face it, when it comes to New Japan, these guys are almost, minus the high-end shenanigans, they're like the classic DX of freaking New Japan. But they've got enough clout that they can back up a lot of stuff that they do. A lot of other guys could be considered, you know, almost in the strong category, which the United Empire, mm, they can't deal with that well. So, yeah, I got LIJ for the win. All the way, man. All right. So my thing is, since I don't know who I should pick, any, meeny, miny, mo, L I J. Here I go. <laughs> All right. So everyone's going for the L I J. That's kind of a um. And I like your name. Thing. Okay. So next, what we got here is um. Stu Grayson, who's officially back. It wasn't like a cameo thing. He's officially back right now. And he's being uh, uh, tempted to join the Reiches. They've been after him. And, and he's been actually fighting, like, on their side in Ring of Honor last couple of weeks. So, you know. And, of course, that, that's rubbing the dark order the wrong way. But, anyway, Stu Grayson versus El Fantasmo, a singles match. And, yeah, I'm going to give it up for, for my boy, Stu Grayson. Uh, Johnny went for Fantasmo and Jack all went for Fantasmo. What do you guys think? As much as I like Stu Grayson, this is uh, this is one of those things that both G, me and Jack and I were having problems with in the whole show. It was these really tough call situations to where if either of them won, I couldn't really be upset. Like, I'm glad Stu's back, but I'm just going to be real with you. I'm literally just throwing something in the air to make it stick. Phantasmo is my boy. I'm going to have to go with El Phantasmo. Hmm. Well, like you were saying, the Sue Grayson is kind of back, and I think it will be crazy for him to be losing. So I'm going to go with Sue Grayson. And I got to say, I really, really, really love the Righteous thing. And I just love that guy with his crazy antics and stuff that he's always doing. I just, I don't know. That, that dude, that dude. And then we got Mr... Mr. Guy with the white soon suspenders that's always showing off how he uh, impresses the ladies. I'll say that. But um, anyways, uh, the next match we got, the last match we got here is the uh, another six-man tag. It's going to be the Mogul Embassy consisting of Swerve Strickland, Toa Leona, and Bishop Khan versus uh, Rapungi Vice, which is Rocky Romero and Trent Beretta and El Desperado. So... Mm. Wow. Between Serve and Desperado, like, I would have just liked the match to be Swerve versus El Desperado, you know? Um, hmm. Fuck, I'll, I'll go with uh, Rapungi Vice and El Desperado. Uh, both Johnny and Jack went for Mogul Embassy, but I guess I'll be the contrarian. I'm going to go for Rapungi Vice. Yeah, I agree with you on this one, Mark. I'm going to have to go with Rapungi Vice. And like, like you were saying, like that could have been another match on the card. Uh, Swerve versus Desperado, that could have literally been an entire match on, on the card, like even on the zero hour, and that would have gotten everybody just hyped up right there off the bat. But, yeah, even with that, though, I still have to give it to uh, Rapungi and Desperado. Okay, I am going to go with Rapongi and Desperado, and the only reason I'm going with Rapongi 
And Desperado is for a very stupid reason. Why? Because Roppongi is where I used to get my hair done when I lived in Japan. Oh, there you go. <laughs> all right, guys, wrap it up. Thing, I'm represent, uh, you know, representing Roppongi. That's all. And like, hey, Lee, if you're still there and you watch this stuff, and I doubt it, but whatever. <laughs> all right. So, anyways, guys, that uh, wraps up for this episode. Like I said, this is a real quick add-on. Only got three matches. Um, Naito is the official person that, that was waiting for that one match with uh, Sting versus Jericho and all that. And no one changed their mind. We're all going with the same people we all voted for. But, uh, in fact, let me just see real quick. I think all of us went for, for Sting's side, did we? Or I know, I did. Uh... I didn't even yeah. care who did Yeah, we all went for Sting's people. side. Because we all had the mentality that whoever the mysterious TVA person would be would be like a big difference maker. No one went for Jericho, not even Johnny this time. But uh, but yeah, so I wrap up, guys. See you next time. This is uh, Mark Rodriguez here. This episode should be up within an, an hour or so. Now that we've got all the matches, no surprises, no like, oh, we couldn't predict this one because they announced it. No, we got them all this time. So see you next time. Bye.